What's up everyone, Chris Disney here, one half of ORC's management, and you're watching Drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking at Moe's. We first, if you're if you watch on YouTube, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications because I've got a lot of good stuff coming. Um, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, you name it, you can find us. Also wanted to give a shout out to some good friends of mine that run the, they call it the Random Podcast. They've been helping me hype up the show, so much appreciated, and hopefully I'll have them on soon. Anyways, today I have with me one of the guys behind the ORC promotion down in San Diego. Welcome to the show. How's it going, Mo? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. Um, one thing I always like to start off with is, one, what got you started as a fan of wrestling, and what got you started in the business itself like i've been a fan as far back as i can remember like i'm one of the few people who can say i had wrestlemania one through five on betamax oh boy <laughs> so i'm a little bit older than i look um i just remember watching wrestling like on my grandfather's lap or next to my grandmother and it just captivated me and became something that like I wanted to do and one moment I found a way to uh, achieve that by myself I latched onto it and having like those sense nice yeah. who, who were some of your favorites growing up um before I got smart to the business like ultimate warrior Hogan uh the Rockers were like dead on like my favorite tag team of all time and then I got introduced to the Road Warriors and I was like these guys are crazy oh man they they were my absolute favorite tag team ever I actually got to see them live once and when that music hit I there not a whole lot gets me to really jump out of my chair but oh boy that did it I, I can totally believe that. Like, I, my first wrestling show I remember, um, Boss Man was like the main event in San Diego, and that was like the coolest thing ever. Was seeing him with doing his trick with the night oh, and everything, and I was like, "This is awesome." My first speaking of Boss Man, he one, was one of, one of my favorites, and the first wrestling show I ever went to got it as a, tickets as a Christmas gift and I don't think it was the main event but one of the matches that night was uh, him versus Yokozuna and I think I was in like third grade at the time and these were four seats we were right near the entrance and I'm I just remember being you know little kid looking up at Yokozuna walking by me I'm like what the heck yeah, from what I, everything I've seen, like the pictures, that dude was a big guy. Yeah, oh, that is an understatement. <laughs> All right, so like we said, you're behind the uh, ORC promotion, One Ring Circus. What got you uh, interested in getting that started? Um, it started as like an idea on what could we me and my partner uh, wrestling Matt Collins we're just shooting the breeze about what could we do that can make money that involves wrestling that we could pitch to Netflix and kind of do like uh, Lucha Underground but something more towards the um um, Hamad, I'm bad with words. Uh, <laughs> words are hard sometimes. <laughs> a, an homage to the roots of professional wrestling in North America. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
And the idea struck with me with the circus. We were SciShow Act. We were, we were what brought you into the tent. Like, yeah. we would have a plant in the audience and we would have our main guy and then we'd draw out the plant and the people would be like, oh my God. And then out came the money. <laughs> and that's where a lot of the terms that people throw around nowadays all come from. No, yeah, that is true. Um, would you say that uh, that's one of the things that maybe sets uh, the ORC apart? Because especially in Southern California, there's like an abundance of independent promotions out there. And you kind of got to set yourself apart. Um, what I'm, what we're trying to do is looking at the landscape, seeing what we can do different, mm. but also looking at what works. Mm -hmm. Like SoCal Pro has been running for 15 years. Um, they were able to do stuff in the pandemic when it was safe enough, but like uh, the owner of SoCal Pro, Jeff Dino, has been a huge help and resource whenever I've had questions. I'm like, this is my situation. How would you do it? Mm, gotcha. Yes, yeah, SoCal Pro is actually the, well, one of two promotions when I was stationed down there that actually got me my first taste of independent wrestling. There was uh, another promotion at the time, New Wave Pro, that was actually my first ever independent wrestling show, and Jeff Dino was actually helping them out too. With New Wave Pro, that was first home. That was my first home. That was um, their first year was my, the, the second half of their first year was the first half of my year as a professional wrestler so cool. Andy Jasic, uh Trevor SoCal Crazy all three of those guys were my trainers and all three of them gave me the tools that I've used and adapted from other trainers and other people who've influenced me throughout my career to get to the point that I'm at now awesome yeah those uh well I know Andy and uh, SoCal Crazy a little better than I know Trevor, but those uh, Andy and SoCal Crazy I both had on the show, great guys, love them to death. I actually just saw Andy ring announce for a SoCal Pro show this past Sunday. No, no kid. Hmm. He hadn't he hadn't mentioned to me that he was doing that, but that's pretty awesome. I know he probably did a pretty good job. That was quite entertaining and it made the show. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. He, he can be quite the guy on the mic, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. He's also someone that instilled in me, if you're doing the same thing as everyone else, make yours look different. Hmm. Yeah, you gotta have that little bit of difference in the product because like I had kind of mentioned, especially in uh, Southern California, there's an abundance of independent wrestling out there. Southern California is like one of the meccas of independent wrestling. So you got to have that thing that sets you apart. Or if you're doing like, like you mentioned, if you're doing the same thing as everybody else, find a little different way of doing it. Yeah, because one of the things that I try to pride myself with is like being in the business for 15 years, being in San Diego for 15 years, and having been a part of some of the bigger promotions that have come through here. Like I've seen and watched hundreds of matches between some of the most amazing talent to grace the ring and TV screens right now. And it's what haven't I seen is always the answer when I'm booking out a show or me and Matt are booking out a show. And it's like, what haven't we seen that we as fans would like to see? And we knowing other fans and talking with our fans that they have asked 
to be mm. shot. That, that's awesome how you uh, in, include the fan aspect into it because, I mean, them coming to the shows, if it wasn't for fans, you wouldn't have anything for to perform in front of. It'd just be like if all those times during the pandemic, it was just a, somebody filming a wrestling match. The Thunderdome era, or whatever they were calling it, where it was just you had the two men enter and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was definitely made the uh, empty arena match not so relevant anymore. Yeah. Um, but no, um, yeah, coming up through San Diego, like, you watch a lot of people do business in lots of different ways. Yeah. Um, around the time that you were probably getting into SoCal Pro and New Wave, I was attached to um, AWA Legends of the Future and Finest City Wrestling. Okay, I I do remember hearing about Finest City Wrestling. So, like, I was learning what to do and what not to do under those guys, watching their matches, being a part of the shows, learning the logistics of everything. Mm. So eventually, um, as FCW became bigger in the later half of like the last decade, I took a backseat stage from from wrestling and was helping out with the logistics of everything and learning the ins and outs of this is what you need to do to put on a show. This is what you need to do to build up to a show. Yeah. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, what with uh, everything you've learned about uh, running shows, what would you say is one of your favorite parts about it? Um, volunteering to drive the boys sometimes was amazing. Because yeah. um, the one thing, one of the two things I've I've kept with me from Nest from uh, SoCal Crazy is. You never stop paying your dues and always protect yourself. Gotcha. And then never stop paying your dues part. Like if anyone was like, okay, well I need to get this person to the airport or I need to have them go pick up to the airport. I'm like, I'll be the first person to be like, okay, I'll go do it. I've good, had good amazing people. I've had amazing conversations with Tommy Dreamer, Sabu, mm-hmm. Reno Scum, Killer Cross before he went to WWE. Um, Little Cholo, like lots of great guys. Definitely some people that would be fun to sit and have a conversation with, I'd imagine. I mean, some of the careers that those guys have had. Yeah, I mean, the, like, the greatest compliment I ever got was, I picked up Sabu at the time I was driving like a 96 Honda Accord. Like, mm. so this was a bucket by our, our timeline standards. Yeah. And he was like, this thing's better than half the cars they picked us up in ECW. And I was like, I will take that. <laughs> hey, good compliment right there. <laughs> um, what would you say is your, uh, your thoughts on the current state of professional wrestling is I mean not just independent wrestling because there's an abundance there but uh, just in general because there's so much for the fans to enjoy if you don't like one thing you're bound to find something else um, I have I honestly haven't been keeping up with mainstream stuff just cause I, I like was all gun hole like when they brought in Ra- Ronda and then mm. like, they just like unceremoniously just had her job out at WrestleMania and I'm like you built her up to be like the baddest chick in the land just to job out to a legacy that and it, it was a clean job out so I'm like this doesn't make sense I, I got you I was watching that myself and I was like okay that's puzzling and it's like, I just feel 
the E sometimes just does throws stuff at the wall and sees what sticks. You know, I can see how people would say that. I know I've definitely felt similar to that with them before. Uh, one thing I know I've been slowly trying to do is uh, just sit back and enjoy the show because, I mean, to be honest, yeah, if I got a little uh, analytical about everything, I mean, yeah, there's a lot that's like, why the hell are they doing that? I, I tried to do that, but, like, my mind's too ADD and, mm. like, one of the, like, things that helps my hyper-focus is professional wrestling, is sitting down mm. and watching the shows watching how the guys are moving and being like huh if i do it like that it will come out cleaner next time i do something similar uh, no i can i can see how that could help i mean when you have that sort of hyper focus you know having something to concentrate on definitely helps and then like moment it doesn't make like it's like you make sense makes sense all of a sudden doesn't make sense you're left trying to make sense of something that they themselves aren't trying to make sense of. No, I totally understand you there. I had plenty of conversations about this uh, this topic and, you know, everybody has, has their opinions uh, and, you know, a lot of people have uh, what kind of like me where you know just try to sit back and enjoy the show because if you do that you're bound to enjoy it a little more but then there's also the people that you know when you've been in for so long and you have especially if you're running shows and you have that analytical mind for it it can kind of be like oh god of it because I mean let's be real like when you're watching the E or you're watching Impact or AEW these are like the three main things running in America this is what mainstream's having their eyes on yeah. you're gonna wanna borrow <laughs> from, <laughs> from them to help yeah. help the creative process yeah but no. you also wanna make it make sense no that is <laughs> definitely definitely true I mean, when somebody on the big stages have something that's seeming to catch on, you're like, hmm, how can we do that without making it like a carbon copy of that? Yeah, like, there's been a couple of times where I've, like, not been paying attention to wrestling, and I'm like, I got this great idea, and someone's like, oh, case in point, like, when I started going from tag team to singles wrestling, I was like, I'm gonna just like do a do the stroke, but instead of like the stroke, it's gonna be a full Nelson. And someone came up to me, he's like, "You mean like the Miz?" And I was like, "The who?" And then he showed me the clip, and I was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> no, I can I can understand you there. Um, one thing I well, I'll get to that thought I was just having next. What are some visions you have for the future of your promotion? Um, right now, we're, we got stuff planned out tentatively till our anniversary show in September. Okay. Um, and we have a bunch of ideas, like, for the next, like, two years, three years, or whatnot, like... I just want to run a show where my fans feel safe, my boys feel like they're appreciated, and it, there's just no politics, no drama. Hey, that that's that's awesome because I mean, you you want the fans to feel safe, you want the guys that are wrestling for you to feel like you give a shit about them, oh. and. You know, you want to keep wrestling fun for everybody. You know, keeping the politics and all that out of it. Totally understand. Yeah. Like, um, this next show we got coming up, 
is kind of like in the middle of us doing a, this faction storyline where this faction just totally decimated all of our faces, including our champion, the last show, stealing the title. Mm. And this next show coming in, we are mixing it up a little bit because we got that storyline flowing over and then I got hit up by a couple of uh, people who've been trained by Tyler Breeze and they're like, hey, we want to come out. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll work you in. So it's kind of like them versus us, but mm -hmm. still us versus the faction at the same time. I gotcha. I gotcha. That, that ought to be that ought to be pretty well, it definitely sounds like it would be pretty awesome, actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, because it's... I feel this is our tester, tester show, because everyone we've been booking is... These are guys that we've known five years, six years, ten years, fifteen years, where, like, these new corporate guys that are com coming in... Yeah. All I know him through is a couple of correspondence through Instagram and Facebook. Gotcha. So it'd be nice to get a fresh look on from outsiders on how they think we're doing. That that that'd be nice. Um, do you, do you guys have anywhere where like I was in the process of putting questions and stuff together? was trying to look up some matches. Do you guys have a specific place where you post those? Um, right now, we we have a lot of... We have a hard cam and we have a roaming cam, usually. So we have a bunch of raw footage, but none of it put together nicely in a package. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it, but I'm also trying to figure out if I know anybody that knows better than me because I rather take the Vince McMahon approach on I may know a little bit about this but I rather pay someone that knows a lot about this to do this job hey if you find somebody that can do that why the heck not you know like moment I do and I can just uh, get the footage to them I'm we're going to be loading up a YouTube page but for now like we do a lot of clips clip shows and throw them up on uh, Facebook. Our okay. trying to keep them short toe, we can throw them up on Instagram. All right, yeah, no, I think I've actually seen some of those clip shows on uh, Facebook because I believe both on my my personal Facebook page and the one I have for the show, I follow you on both, so I, I've kept an eye on them a little bit, and I, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. Yeah. The last one I, I'm kind of proud of because it's all fan footage that fans from the show sent me, and I'm like, if they're spending mm -hmm. this much time like recording and taking pictures and putting it on their social media as well, obviously I'm doing something that they find entertaining. Hey, no, that's a very good in indicator right there. That is for sure. Um, all right, so one thing I like to do with everybody is a little bit of a speed round sort of thing where okay. I can name some people, maybe a promotion, and you give me your first thoughts on them. Gotcha. All right, one we kind of talked about a little bit. SoCal crazy. That's like a big brother to me. Um, he trained me, trained me like the first six, seven months I was in the business. Um, I walked away from New Wave due to personal issues and whatnot. Because, um, I mean, everyone goes through personal demons in their 20s. Some of us handle it better than others. I was not handling mine too well. Um, but anytime after that, he always looked out for me, like was a voice of 
friend, friendship, our concern, and was always there to give advice after a match or to tell me, hey, you know better, why are you doing this instead of doing that? And I'm like, all right. No, he's definitely been a real good friend of mine. And especially since starting this up, he's, I mean, I've had him on and he's definitely been helping me spread the word because as of right now, I'm not a part of a big like podcast network. I'm like shooting it myself, putting it out on the podcast platforms and everything's all done by me. So any word of mouth getting it out is great. And he's been a huge help with that. Um, Secondly, one of my other favorites from San Diego, and I mean, he's still a favorite of mine, was actually recently on Game Changer Wrestling B-Boy. I know B-Boy through his stint in the later half of FCW when they opened up Battle U, and then that later became Level Up. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the guys that started out there are now uh, trainers and at Level Up under B-Boy. I talked with uh, Hunter Freeman yesterday, and we got to chatting about him a little bit. And Hunter's another good guy who's like, got a good future as long as he doesn't end up getting any serious injuries heading his way. Yeah, no, he's definitely been somebody I've been impressed with. He, I remember getting my first news of him in SoCal Pro, but it was shortly after I had left. Because I, my enlistment ended back in 2012, and I believe it was right a little bit after that that I first started seeing him there. With um, Ryan Walker, right? As yeah, I have Ryan Walker actually just wrestled his last match in San Diego as at this moment at the SoCal Pro Show because he's venturing out elsewhere. Oh, cool! Um, I'll have to see if I can catch somewhere and find that show because I know SoCal Pro has stuff they put out. Yeah. I'm- believe there's clips on Instagram. I'm not entirely sure. I can I can take a look. Um, next person, somebody in the uh, not really a wrestler himself, but he's in the uh, kind of wrestling news sort of stuff. Dave Meltzer. I, I've been wanting to bring this guy up to somebody. Meltzer... It just Meltzer seems weird, weird to me. Like, not in a disrespectful way, but like, it's a guy who's been following the product for so long. He's let his, uh, he's let his opinion evolve with the product. But then sometimes, when the product goes back to a point in time. Like, uh, trying to remember. I can't remember an instance, like, like pinpoint, but like you're seeing, like stuff you would see in the eighties, mm. like just that good, like Ricky Steamboat Flair type match. Yeah. Sometimes, like his opinion on it, I I think it's weird when if you go back and see his opinion about that match, it was. Oh, cool! But now, now it's good. now. Yeah, that that's one thing I've noticed with him. And my other thing is, you know, like we said, a guy that's been following it for so long. But not only what you had mentioned, but also the fact that he has had so many of his stories get disproven, and it's like. Some people use his stuff as gospel, and others see it as complete bullshit. So it's just like, 
confusing to me. I mean, that's the overall of anyone attached to this business. It's half your shit's bullshit, the other half is the word of God. And the only way you're going to know it is if you were living that experience with the person. That, that is true. Sometimes the only way you can do that is in getting that 100% truth is if you're actually in the trenches with that person. Um, one next guy that I was going to bring up, somebody that is not a fan of Dave Meltzer in the least, but does have experience on the administration side of the wrestling business, Eric Bischoff. That's someone I've yet to meet in the business. Um, because I'm a huge nerd. I do Comic Con. I do the, the comic book festivals. It's like anything comic related or like basically nerd related. I try to get to and do because wrestling and comics, like as far as like us growing up, was kind of hand in hand. Because you had WCW with Marvel. You had the Dark Horse Undertaker stuff in the late mm-hmm. 90s. Yeah. It just it melded together yeah and a lot of them a lot of times like they'll be there for a meet and greet and whatnot that's how i met piper that's how i met uh the hurricane and rvd met steiner that way um i've always stated that if you could take eric bischoff paul Heyman, and jim Cornette, put these three men in a room with a shit ton of money you could get something that will rival WWE. You just might have to hide a body or two. You know, I never thought about that, but I I would have to agree. You'd get something pretty damn special with the three of them and, uh, well, Vince McMahon or Tony Khan money, for sure. <laughs> I mean, if they had, like, 90s billionaire Ted money, the things that they would do. Oh, yeah. No, I can totally agree with you there. Um, well, one last guy, uh, Jim Ross. That's the voice of a generation. And... Three. Like, when I came... Like I said, when I started remembering watching wrestling, I'm like three years old. Two, three years old, so it's like 87, 89. So my original voices of wrestling were Monsoon and Heenan or Monsoon and Ventura, and then growing up into the Attitude attitude Era and Age, it was Lawler and JR, and that was the guys. And so we had SmackDown, and then you had Cole and Taz, which I still like Cole and Taz as commentator partners. They, they... They definitely had a little something special there. I, I can't argue that. Um, one thing I also like to do with each of my guests is ask a non-wrestling related question. You kind of brought up going to comic cons and stuff. Uh, what are... And, might sound stupid, but what are like some of your favorite uh, things within? Uh, are you Marvel, DC, or, or that whole argument? I'm. I've always been a Marvel guy. I will always be a Marvel guy till the day I die. Uh, it's the stories and the characters are more compelling and more able to. Um relate to whereas like you have our you have tony stark yeah he's (laughs) a billionaire but in the like late 70s early 80s when they delved into his alcoholism anyone can relate to that you didn't have to be a millionaire to relate to that whereas you have batman who honestly is just a plot point like that's the going thing i feel with dc is like all their main heroes are just the plot point they're not a part of the story they're the story and the narrative where 
Spider-Man, his plot point that day is trying to rescue Gwen Stacy from the Goblin. Gotcha. You know, I've always considered myself more of a Marvel guy myself. I mean, I think uh, I remember when uh, I think it was Endgame. It was either Endgame or uh, the one before it. Yeah, where, so I, where I had had my uh, I had had a surgery and I wasn't supposed to be driving, but I knew my wife wouldn't want to go to the movie. But you know what? Screw it. I went and I ordered an Uber to take me to the movie theater. Um, the cool thing about Infinity War is I actually got paid by the company I was working with at the time to go, like, the entire company got paid to go watch it on the <laughs> boss of time. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Hey, that, that's nice. I've, I've never worked for a company that did anything like that. <laughs> but hey, yeah, no, that, that's one of my, that was a, that was a good one. I know they made a big deal about it being a, a long one, but I'm like, I remember getting out of there. I'm like, I didn't realize that it had been that long until I was walking out of the theater. And then you got the stiff leg moving going. It's like, oh, I've been <laughs> on my ass too long. <laughs> It, nope, that, that, yep, totally happened. <laughs> yeah, like, watching Endgame, at, like, I've probably seen Endgame in theaters, like, four times. Like, went uh, preview night, or the night before with a bunch of my buddies, and we're just in awe with, like, everything that's happening, and then when it gets to the final battle scene, mm -hmm. like... It's, it's a role of grown men with tears running down their eyes because <laughs> it, it's something like none of us thought we'd ever see cinematically in our lives. Like animated, yes, but like live action, no. Oh, yeah. And I remember when uh, that final battle scene, when uh, the Thor's hammer was coming in and all of a sudden you see Captain America holding it and everybody's like oh my god like the whole theater went nuts I, I, I like the, how they did the callback with Thor because I just got done watching uh, Age of Ultron and the scene where they all try to lift the hammer mm. and like Rogers moves it and Thor's like looking kind of like okay they're about to take away like the one thing that makes me special and Rogers being Rogers didn't want to take that away from it but when you mm. see the end game, Thor's like, "I knew it." <laughs> yes, that was that was definitely one of my favorite parts of the movie. It's like, "Oh, oh dude!" And how uh, they they made a well after the movie was done. They there was a bunch of people making the point of how in previous movies he had always attempted to say. Avengers assemble, but he would never fully say it until that moment in the final battle scene of that movie, and then another moment that when I saw it in the theaters, the crowd, the whole theater just went. <gasps> yeah, it was. Uh, again, just to watch Age of Ultron. Like the last scene is he is like after you see Wanda and her new getup, Sam and his the Vision War Machine. Mm -hmm. He's like, Avengers, and then it fades to black before you can say a symbol. Yes. Oh, man. I remember watching that the first time, and everybody's like, oh, the, what the hell? That never that never got me. What got me was, um, I'm a huge Samuel L. Jackson fan, mm. and the fact that they have still not let us get his motherfucker moment pisses me off, and the fact that they teased it at the end of Infinity War, when you went and called uh, Captain Marvel, oh, and, and there's like, that he's moment to where he's... Mm. and he's like mother, and then it. I'm oh like, yeah, oh I never thought about that, man. Oh, now that's irking me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So one thing to finally end 
the show, I want to give you the chance. I know you mentioned having a handful of shows coming up. I want you to be able to plug those and plug the, your social media so people can go and for ORC, see the little clips and all that. Yeah. All right, so doing a show downtown on 420. <laughs> and it's not 420 friendly only because we're out in public, but it's called Slam Diego. It's literally it's on 13th and Market, literally like I would say four blocks away from the stadium. Nice. Um, the 23rd, I'm up at a debuting promotion called North Cal Pro. So, fun to see how that turns out. And then ORC is going to be back on the 30th of April at Stanteeth Stampede. You can get your tickets at Eventbrite at stampede, stampede.eventbrite.com or hit us at Venmo. Um, at one ring, O and R capitalized hyphen circus, the C capitalized. Our Instagram is at ORC underscore wrestling, and then Facebook's at ORC wrestling 22. All right. And as far as the the ways to get tickets, I'll be uh, on the YouTube version, be posting. A link to where people can get tickets so we can maybe help boost okay. some numbers there. So it'd be Santee Stampede dot Eventbrite dot com. All the words put All right. together. All right. I'll make sure I get that in there. Um, that's about all I have for today. Want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, thank you. I will be posting this probably next week. I'll probably do two next week just so we get uh, another one in. But we'll make sure we get this uploaded and ready to go so we can uh, hype up those shows of yours. Thank you. Oh, your, your mic cut off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're, you're working now. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Phone call decided it's going to mute me and say, you can't decline or anything. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I said, uh, we'll post a link to uh, your Santee Stampede show in the description. And... Again, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I very much appreciate that. You're very welcome. Yes.